Okay, guys, just before I set this off, this is just going to be a quick video, not a quick video, video segment. I want to look up a couple of few, th a couple of things that I found that I am kind of troubled with. And the first thing I want to start off with is this stupid MTV video where they're interviewing Bill de Blasio, the piece of shit mayor who wants to criminal, who wants, you, you know, hates cops and, you know, loves all the minorities. Because, I mean, he's a piece of shit, and he doesn't really care about anyone. And he's a dim. So, I mean, that doesn't automatically make him bad, but he's a crappy dim. He's talking with this chick about how the Grammys are returning to New York. And one of the things he says is that, uh, New York is the music capital the world. Music capital of the world. Even though they say that the Grammys haven't been in New York for the last 15 years. I'm like, and it, and I'm like, really? Austin, I, in my home state, Austin, Austin, Texas, that is the music capital of the world, the live music capital of the world at least, but still, live music is still music, so this is just ludicrous from the Blasio, you're probably going to spill some political message into it, so I mean, we'll get into this bullshit. Morning, that next year, for the first time in 15 years, the Grammy Awards will return to New York City. Oh, great. I, oh, oh. Congratulations. No, you're not. What does this decision mean for the city? It's a big, big deal. We're the musical capital of the world. No, you are not. I just said this two seconds ago. You are not the music capital of the world. You're the autistic capital of the world now. Because you're running it, and I'm pretty sure you're autistic. You're just a do. You're a douchebag to cops. Anyone who remotely disagrees with you, you call them racist, sexist, and bigoted. And considering you come from the same party as Michael Bloomberg, who was also a really shit gov mayor for New York. I mean, come on, come on, just come on, son, come on. What's going on right now is that these major award ceremonies are becoming great platforms for artists to speak their mind about the political climate. I knew it! I knew it! Do you think it's important to bring that sort of voice and challenge to the city of New York? No! New York is already a political cesspool as it is. And plus, you're at a music award. You're supposed to be accepting awards for your music, not becoming a political pa platform for your mindless followers to follow. This is one of the things that kind of ticked me off about the women's march, is how they were cannibalizing Taylor Swift, even though she gave a verbal, not a, not a verbal announcement, but a vague, uh, vague endorsement of the protest. But they said, oh no, she didn't come to the women's march, so therefore that means she's, uh, she's selling out or something like that, right? This is such ludicrous. I knew they would. I knew MTV was gonna pull this shit, and they did this just recently with. They did something really stupid just recently too with Emma Watson getting the first non-gendered uh, best actor award, which I thought was stupid. And I bet she got it from Beauty and the Beast because, and I'm never watching that movie ever. <laughs> the CG looks so bad it gets me mad. And freaking, uh, not only that, they changed key aspects of the story along with the gay character. He's a bad guy in the show. And while he does, in the original show, and while he does like the main villain, he keeps it to himself and isn't all outspoken about his sexuality. In the movie he is, Steven Crowder did a pretty good review on that. I want you guys to check it out if you get the chance, but yeah. It's... <laughs> But the, yeah, they made a non-gendered actress award, actor reward. I, I think the only good thing that came out of the MTV Awards was uh, Hugh Jackman and Daphne O'Keefe getting the Best Duo Award because Logan was such a good movie. I can't wait for it to come out and then I get to watch it in black and white. I want to see how that goes. That, that sounds pretty cool. But, I mean, other than the Logan thing... Now we're going into this crappy cesspool of MTV being political douche nozzles. Oh my god. They just posted this video. Um, they posted this video today. I'm guessing it's from a couple hours ago. It's got two dislikes and I'm one of the eight dislikes. <laughs> and it has 77 views. <laughs> oh my god. 
They are so dead and like dislikes, but yet they're not getting demonetized because, you know, YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, let's keep it going. That's who we are. We're a city that has always understood the importance of protests and people speaking their mind. We are a city... Uh, what real important protest really happened in New York over the last, I don't know, half century or even century? Other than, like, union protest or something? I mean, I'm really curious about that. I haven't heard any major protest coming from New York in years. I don't even think I've heard it in my lifetime of any major one happening within the last century or so. So, I mean, I don't know where he's getting this. Do you want protest towns? Go to, like, Montgomery or to Selma for, like, the civil rights protest stuff. Or D.C. D.C., I think, is the big ground for really huge protests. I mean, we saw that with the civil rights movement, and then we also saw it a little bit with the Women's March, even though the Women's March was a terrible idea and should never be repeated ever by anyone <laughs> if they want to keep a good standing of credibility because the Women's March was so was so bad. Even women who identify as third wave feminists say it was so stupid. So, I mean, let's continue. That has been tolerant of all ideologies. No, you it haven't. wouldn't be New York City if we didn't have a lot of people here challenging the status quo. I can say, as someone who got elected, challenging the status quo, I, I think it's a healthy. No, you didn't. You are the status quo. You came from the same party as Michael Bloomberg, who helped make the city one of the worst crime ridden cities in America, to where the Latinos and blacks are overrepresented in crime statistics. Because guess what? They're committing more of the crimes, but you're not doing anything to solve that, like Rudy Giuliani, Gilu or whatever his name, Rudy Giuliani, did during his tenure after 9-11, or during, during, before, during, and after 9-11, where he actually had black crime was down to, like, the lowest point it had ever been in New York City. So, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about challenging the status quo part of our society, and let's face it, since the election in November, that impulse is only intensified. More and more artists are speaking their- Because they are mindless drones who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And they're being- they're just basically continuing off the bullshit that they were spoon-fed back when they were kids, when they didn't know any better. I mean, you really don't know anything. Look at this, I've already made a seven minute- seven minute video over a two minute interview. Or at least two minutes of an interview. God, I really love to drag things out, don't I? Uh, if this gets any worse, I'm gonna be like rags where I have like hour long videos over bullshit like this. This is gonna get bad. I think that's very healthy for our society. No, it's not. What better not with you. place to do it? We're not only the capital of the music, we're okay, the capital of free speech. No, you're not. The capital of freedom of speech. What a ludicrous claim. You know nothing. Okay, before I start this off, but well, before I keep going, I just want to say this. I do not think we should be taking away, away the right to protest. I do not think that at all. But when the climate, like it has, has gone to physical violence, threats of death coming from people rioting in, like, Berkeley and stuff, and the rise of Antifa, that's where I have a problem. I don't have a problem with you peacefully protesting and doing like the Women's March did, which ironically was the only good thing the Women's March did, was be non-violent. But I don't want to go out there, like during the, like after the inauguration of Donald Trump, but they were freaking burnt, breaking the glass windows of Starbucks and First, first uh, the uh, First Bank of America and shit like that. I mean, I don't want to just go out there and get my ass kicked just because I have a different point of view. Or I have a different worldview, and just specifically. So I mean, that's why I have such a problem with these rioters and protesters today, because they're protesting stupid shit. They don't know what they're talking about. Typically, when you interview them, I mean, there are videos about this out there. James Allen does some pretty good ones, but I mean, it's just stupid. Right around the time of your election a few years back, people were talking about how your kids are really into music, too. Yeah. Oh Especially, God. I know at least one of your kids is super into metal. Has that rubbed off on you at all? Good! Like a secret Scandinavian, like, Viking metalhead? The whole Scandinavian metal thing? Mm -hmm. 
actually a very big deal in this household for a while. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, I so highly doubt it. Ciferum, that was a big one. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a big one. Well, considering our... you share a platform with Beyonce, I highly doubt that. I mean, metal has become so alienated in recent years. And it, it really pisses me off. Because I love metal music, but it's become villainized to such a degree that I that it's just it just pisses me off. I mean, you have some pop artists that are in the mainstream pop culture who will make, form their own metal bands like Ice-T did. And I happen to like Ice-T's rap music too a little bit, even though I don't particularly enjoy rap. But, I mean, I love Ice-T's music. He has some pretty good songs, as derogatory as they are. And uh, not only that, Rage Against the Machine is a rap metal band, which I love rap metal. Rap metal is a pretty good subgenre of metal. It's really different, and I think rap and metal blend together really well, unlike most genres do. So, but still, I mean, considering you share a platform with Beyonce, who probably doesn't even listen to heavy metal at all, and also hates basically everyone, I, I highly doubt that. I just highly doubt that. Uh, so, so there's that side of them, and then there's a uh, hip hop side. I love uh, Childish Gambino. I feel very deeply divided on Kanye as my kids do, depending on the album and the song. Bullshit. You probably don't like him just because of what he said after the election and that you that everyone was being fooled by Mark Zuckerberg and the Democratic Party and why he voted for Trump in particular and not for Hillary. I mean, plus, the Kardashians are kind of split politically. I mean, you had Caitlyn Jenner support Trump because, I mean, Trump was pro-LGBT. Which is not surprising in any way because, I mean, he isn't, he isn't a bad dude when it comes to that stuff. So, I mean, how they made the gay thing turn into anti-Trump was really astonishing to me. I think it was just because he had an R by his name it was really the only reasoning as to why... He was so vilified by the left, at least for being anti-gay, anti-gay, even though he wasn't. Chance the Rapper, big fan of him. And the Viking Metal, got a good dose of that too. Bullshit. My music is like late 70s, early 80s. So The Clash, bunch of reggae, The uh, Wailers, Steel Pulse. I love Steel Pulse. That band Steel is Pulse so is underrated. Steel Pulse is... Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, the rest of the video sounds kind of retarded. So anyway... Uh, so yeah, I don't particularly care about that video anymore. I'll try to find something. I will come back in a second. Hold on. Well, I'm just going to pause it and then start it back up again. So it won't take that long. Okay, guys. I found the perfect one. I know this is kind of late. This is, I think, two weeks late, actually. But we're going to go on to Decoded. MTV News is Decoded about their BS on basically the entire issue of the word cuck and I don't really like the word cuck I don't it just doesn't sound right to me it's really weird but I mean hey I'm gonna kind of give this video a chance just because of you know it's something we disagree we both agree on but she's probably gonna turn this into a fuck white people issue anyway uh, the ODST soundtrack was so good It's just so good. I'll, I'll pause it for a second so we can get past it. I'm not going to skip it. It's too good. Alright, so, I mean, that's just good. I, mean, I really love the ODSC opening cutscene and, you know, the music starting off with the main titles. It's just too good. And then you have the, like, half the main cast of Firefly in this game, which is really cool. Just saying, Dutch. Okay, I'm turning a, I'm turning a video bashing no. MTV into <laughs> an ODST free, an ODST fanboying match. But anyway, let's get into the BS. Well, Nathan Billion, Nathan Fillion's voice is just too majestic <laughs> to ignore. But anyway, let's go. How do you pack 
hundreds of years of racism, sexism, and misogyny into just four letters? C-U-C-K. That also could have been interpreted as cock, <laughs> because, I mean, racism, sexism, and misogyny. Racism, sexism, and misogyny. I think that's what she said. Let's get that back. I'm an idiot. Call Captain. Captain. How do you pack hundreds of years of racism, sexism, and misogyny? Racism, sexism, and misogyny, I think, are kind of the same thing. So, I mean, just racism and sexism. Just four letters? C-U-C-K. And like I said, it could have been interpreted as cock because men with penises usually have the upper hand in the political world, at least. At least, according to them, even though women make up a large majority of the voting base, in America at least, and probably the entire Western world, unlike Saudi Arabia, where they actually are being sexist, or, being sexist, misogynist, and racist. So, I mean, uh, not sure where she's getting her info from. Of course, she, this isn't the first time she's gone full retard. I think every time there's a Dakota episode comes out, her level of autism just gets increased dramatically. So let's go. Relax, Ruby. You don't mean nothing. Besides, that was one of those times. Oh god, I hate that. I hate that sound. Wah, wah, wah. Ugh, sounds like gross. Sounds like gross negligence of of school te a school principal not realizing there's a pedophile on campus that is a teacher. So it ugh, sounds like AIDS. It's just bad. <laughs> you've been online recently, you might have noticed the word cuck being thrown around a lot. Yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't received any cucks, at least not to my knowledge, but I mean, it's not that bad of a word. I mean, people I watch on YouTube say it a little bit, like Andy Worski. I mean, they don't say it a lot, but they'll say it occasionally. But... <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it has been thrown around since Trump was first talked about in the political sphere. A lot of his supporters use it. A lot of people who aren't his supporters kind of use it. I, I just don't like the word in particular because it just sounds stupid. So let's just keep going. Not to be confused with that male chicken. You're a man who... Uh, male chicken? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> male chicken? What is she talking about? No. I think you mean the male body part. And yes, chicken are called cocks. <laughs> But I, we, but we all know watching MTV News, or at least formerly MTV News, who was posting this, is MTV now. That you hate men, you hate white men in particular. Nothing, and they don't say anything about Cubans. They don't. They don't. The only people they talk about when they talk about Latinos are Mexicans. I don't ever see them talking really about Cubans. Or. Salvadorians, or Guatemalans, or Belizeans, or Venezuelans, or basically anyone of Latino-ish descent. So, I mean, I have no idea what she's talking about. Identifies as a feminist? Cuck. Don't like Donald Trump? Cuck. Someone who like- The fuck? Alright, so I don't think, I think cuck is a term just thrown around specifically by males. I don't think a dude, even if they were wanting to be that offensive, would ever do it to a woman. <laughs> so, I mean, calling someone a feminist, I call them a cunt. Even though I also hate that word, because it just sounds, like I said, it sounds, yeah. So, not only that, and then don't like Donald Trump, yes. That will happen to you. You will be called a cuck, but still, it doesn't matter. I just, I just really hate that word. So let's continue. It's a certain MTV web series host that you don't like. Cuck. To understand. No, like I just said, I would never call a woman a cuck. I would call her a cunt if she pisses me off enough. <laughs> so yes, I will call you, Francesca, whatever your middle name is, Ramsey, a cunt. Don't like it? Suck a dick. Or if you're, wait, wait, yes. Suck your interracial cock that you hate because you hate white people. Because apparently your husband's also white. So, hee hee hee. History of cock. Look no further than its two delightfully intertwined components. Misogyny and racism. Uh, the key ingredients in America's favorite sh sandwich. Now, 
Oh my god, she, she's also still implying that America was founded on purely by racism and sexism, which is what is not. It was founded by pilgrims and immigrants who were trying to get a better life. They screwed up when, kind of screwed up when we got to the Native Americans, but still, America wasn't founded on racism and sexism. It's not a beacon of racism and sexism like it used to be. We had a war to actually curb sexism. Well, not to curb sexism, to curb racism. And albeit it wasn't very... It wasn't all one-sided where the racism was, unfortunately, but still... One of the reasons the Civil War was fought was to stop slavery. It is one of the big reasons why people seceded from the Union in the first place, but still. So anyway, let's get back. Before we get into Cuck's modern usage, we have to go all the way back to the innocent cuckoo bird. Cuckoo birds commonly lay their eggs in other birds' nests and leave them there to be raised. During the Middle Ages, that otherwise benign bird became a symbol for a husband with an unfaithful wife. From cuckoo came... Yes. Yes, we know. I mean, at least I've heard. That's where the origins of Cuck came from. Which is bad for you, as a, as a man, at least. If you're a dude and your wife is not faithful to you, that causes some problems. Not only for your relationships, but also social status. If your wife's not being faithful to you, you got you, it was well known you either had some either you had problems or your wife was just being a bitch. So um, there's that. That was and that's not really great sexism. If your wife was unfaithful but first of all, if you beat your wife, you got your ass handed to you by the entire town, especially women. And then if you were beaten by your wife, you would be embarrassed publicly. But you get your you get yourself tied to a jackass. By jackass, I mean dog. You would get yourself tied to one of those, and you would and that thing would they'd slap its ass, and you'd be on for a ride for a while. So. Yeah, men didn't have it as good as people thought think they do <laughs> back in the day. So, as I shoot this brute in the balls. Cuckold, which literally means a man whose wife has slept with another man and then raises a child who is not his. Long before well, guys sucks. on Reddit got a hold of the phrase, cuckolds were a staple in English literature. Okay, why are you automatically assuming it's Reddit? I mean, Reddit's not exactly the greatest place, but I mean, they're not in the, they're not worse than 4chan. 4chan is pretty damn bad. And I'm not a guy who's experienced 4chan, but I know what they do. I mean, I know a guy, a pretty cool dude at my school, He's been on 4chan a bit, and he's seen some shit. He's seen some shit. I mean, but that's a video for another time. Shakespeare loved to use men's fear of becoming a cuckold as a plot point. Cuckolds even have that's their own rap music. Take Kanye West's Gold Digger. 18 years, 18 years, and on her 18th birthday, he found out it wasn't him. Over time, the shortened well, version sucks. of the word cuck became more common, and that's likely because of two of America's favorite pastimes: racism. racism? And, and sexism, pornography, oh. cuckold or cuck. That was that was a that was a plot twist. <laughs> that, that that was a really big plot twist. It's like so I was like racism and sexism, racism and pornography. They do have that category though in the on porn sites. I mean, I have been on them before. I mean, I will not share my experiences with them because I mean, that private stuff. But I mean, I'm not a pervert per se. I mean, anime waifus or life, but <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that is a that is a genre of porn, unfortunately. So that's how it kind of got popular. But then again, I still didn't hear about it till like maybe twelve, not twelve. Uh, mm, I I don't think you think I heard that word until I was seventeen. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> and even then, there's kind of some SJW stuff on porn, as Steven Crowder pointed out in one of his videos. Ironically, porn is being SJW'd. I think the porn be the one thing that would be safe from that stuff, but no, it's not. 
I mean, that's kind of sad. I mean, it, it, it just tells you what kind of world we're coming into. Became used to refer to a genre of porn where husbands, usually white, watch their wives have sex with another man, usually black. Not only is she cheating on you, but she's cheating with a man who's perceived as racially inferior. What the fuck? What the f- Okay. What year did she say that porn got started up? I, I don't- I didn't hear a, a year. If it came up during the 70s, maybe. 80s, doubt it. 90s, beyond. Highly, highly, highly doubt it. So, I mean, this is all, this is a pretty big ludicrous claim <laughs> that a man who was sleeping with your wife was racially inferior and you became a cuckold. I, I, I don't like, to, I don't really understand what the point she's trying to make here. I, mean, I don't understand any point she's trying to make. I mean, I've watched people respond to her videos all the time. She just doesn't know. She knows absolutely nothing. And MTV still hasn't gotten a message yet. It's just bad because they have gotten loads of backlash from everyone on YouTube that is a conservative or at least right-leaning or anti-SJW like Easy on Me. But, I mean, good God, they still haven't learned their lesson. And to make that worse, Comedy Central's turned into an SJW shitstorm because guess what? They're giving Francesca Ramsey her own little spot on Comedy Central again after she got ousted from the nightly show. <laughs> My god. But what leads many guys to use the term isn't just its racist undertones, but surprise, rampant sexism. Oh now, god, if you really want to know where the modern usage of cup comes from, remember that pickup artist scene from the early 2000s? That mystery guy? I mean, it's or if you don't, but we gotta talk about it. What's wrong with the pickup guy? I've never heard of him before. The pickup artist community's main goal was to teach socially awkward men how to lure women using a variety of manipulative techniques. Manipulative techniques. Manipulative. What are you talking about, manipulative? They were actually trying to teach men to hypnotize women and bring them to their bedrooms to have sex and then just leave them out on the street for a few days? You think anyone would have the balls to do that in this world? Especially as it is today? You think any guy would ever want to do that? I know I wouldn't. And I respect women on a really large level. Apparently you don't respect men on a very large level like you should. You don't respect anyone who's not a minority. So, I mean... I'm a blame racism and sexism. So when it comes to men, pickup artists like to divide them into alphas and betas. An alpha is a guy who took that is true. Now, there is different class of male, alpha and beta. Beta male Joe from uh, the show Full Frontal with Samantha B. There are beta dudes, dudes who will give in to the woman, and that's not necessarily a bad thing if you want to, if you like, if you like being submissive, but, uh, if you, but being an alpha is somewhat a crime, at least, at least that's what she's trying to point out, I mean, we'll keep it going. Shit. Totally gets all the sexy desires because it's controlling and dominant personality. Uh, some, a lot of women, and you, you, this isn't going to be a popular opinion, but a lot of women like dominant men, at least it, at least it's what I've kind of seen from psychology studies and of course a lot of TV shows, they, they like a man with power and there's, the show, this anime that I really like, this is one of my favorite animes of all time, it's called Neon Genesis Evangelion, one of the main characters, her name's Oscar Langley Soryu, uh, she's a really open-minded individual, she will call most people idiots, <laughs> calling them an antabaka, and stuff, but she's really open, and she's really brash and headstrong, and she has this attraction to the main character named Shinji Ikari. He's a shy, timid dude, keeps to himself mostly. So she does what he, she does throughout the series what she can to make him open up, be more assertive, be more brash. I mean, that kind of implies that she wants a guy to be 
be, you know, more, more dominant, to be, to be a dude, and she actually had a crush beforehand on a dude in his, I think, almost 30s named Kaji, and it's a really bad relationship, it doesn't go well, but she has this crush on this guy named Kaji, and, uh, she basically throws himself at him a lot, and he even got to the point where, like, before, like, every, everyone met her, there was this cutscene in one of the later episodes where she literally threw her, threw herself on him, took off her shirt, showed him her boobs, and said, Take me now, please! And so, I mean, yes, women typically do like a dominant guy. Of course, the Ava Fenom's fucked up, so they'll do whatever the hell they want to. <laughs> but whatever. So attractive to women. That was sarcasm, by the way. Meanwhile, a beta is a guy who's too nice to be an alpha, and supposedly is. Be yeah, be Shinji Ikari, me, my, me, me, myself, and Shinji Ikari, basically. We are, we are that way. We are too shy. We're too timid. We'll let women take control of everything if that's what we want to do. So, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, shit. Fuck. But, yeah. I mean, I'm not ashamed that I'm shy. I mean, I definitely wish I were a little bit more assertive in situations. That way I could actually get a girlfriend forever long. <laughs> but, I mean, being a beta isn't all that bad unless you're doing it politically. Like, you're just giving in just because, oh, you can get a couple political points. Just sub submitting to the third wave feminist just to get some pussy. I'm sorry, I don't like using that word either. But, I mean, that had to be said. Always be used by women and never get slayed. Being taught to respect women yep. is referred to as betafying. Uh, not really. I think from a typical standpoint all men especially those from religious dominations like Christianity and Judaism are taught to respect women then of course there are a lot of athe there are atheists who treat women a lot better than they do themselves so I mean it isn't necessarily a bad thing that men are beta sometimes it's just when you're submitting in a way that is just completely retarded and even getting to the point where it goes to BDSM territory and it's a bit of a problem, and you need help. But, I mean, like I said, I have nothing against betas. I probably am a beta male. I most likely am a beta male. So, I mean, if you want to date someone who's assertive and brash, I'm not the guy I'm not the guy for you. I, Shinji Ikari is not the guy for you, unless you actually are attracted to him and you want to help them. And if you are like an Oscar, I mean, that's great, but... Uh, I highly doubt I'm going to meet one in the near future. I mean, I know one, but she lives in Pennsylvania, so I can't do shit on that end. So, <laughs> anyway, let's keep going into the cancer. A beta is also often referred to as, you guessed it, cuck. a cuck. Call Essentially, it. to call someone a cuck is to imply that they aren't a real or strong man, as if there's only one way to be a man. Uh, is there more than one way to be a woman? Oh my god, masculinity is so fragile. Oh my god, I knew, I, I had a feeling this was going to come up. Fragile, toxic, toxic and fragile masculinity. Oh my god, there are different forms of masculinity. There are masculine guys who are feminine. There are masculine guys who are submissive. There are masculine guys who really aren't social. Besides, if you are really masculine... Like, you're masculine in every way, you don't take shit from nobody, and you're probably the strongest dude ever of all time. Holy shit, look those leaves. So, I mean, I hate it when these feminists come up here and say, Oh, Zogs and Mas- the new masculinity is so fragile just because you get triggered by a couple of, uh, words we talked about. They don't know, they just don't know. They're basically feeding in their own bullshit. And you can say the same thing about women. Women have, at least from what I've experienced, a lot more fragile emotions. You say one wrong word to them, like you call them a little bit fat, you, you die. 
by either them crushing you or breaking your neck, if they are that skilled in martial arts. <laughs> but still, I mean, it's it's hard not to piss off a woman. It's easy not to piss off a man because a man will typically have differing point differing points, like a lot more diverse thought most of the time. I mean, I'm not saying that women don't. A lot of women do. But as a guy, I mean, we're into a lot of different things. But men also like to be brutally honest. At least men try to be. I try to be brutally honest. It doesn't really work out well, especially when I'm not trying not to piss people off. It, but it's hard. <laughs> so, I mean, Francesca Ramsey, she's just, she's just running out of the imagination. She's going out of the default that fragile masculinity is so fragile. So, I mean, she's a bitch. In many ways, Trump has become the ideal alpha for many men. His ability to succeed. Uh, I, I moved. I moved on her like a bitch. Oh my god. They, uh, oh my god. Dude, if this is about the Trump tape bullshit, they let him do it. They consented to it. They said, "Oh hey, you can grab my pussy anytime you want to, even if it's on live delivery." I mean, they didn't actually say that, but still, they said they basically said to him, "You can do it. You can grab." My quote unquote pussy. Looks like a family feud, like they were killed by so, uh, There's something I should know. God damn. Not in spite of, but because of his arrogant and sexist behavior, is sadly inspirational to him. He is not a sexist. How many times do I gotta say this? I made a literal video about this saying he's not a sexist. But yet, oh, it's your default, though. He's got to be a racist. He's got to be a sexist. He's got to be all these stupid buzzwords that you got to pull out of your stupid book. That you probably, the, the buzzword national, national Webster something book. I, mean, I don't know. It's, they, she just doesn't know. She knows absolutely nothing about him as a person before he got into the public life, during his public tenure, as a comedian, not a comedian, as a business person and reality TV show host. I mean, he technically is a celebrity. <laughs> so, I mean, and the show, The Apprentice, recently died off, but still. You just don't know. You don't know! Okay, great. Moving on. Your mom. So why do people even like to say cuck so much? Because of power. To call someone a cuck is an... No, it doesn't! It's not as any more. It's not giving anyone any more institutional power by some white supremacist calling a black guy a nigger. And I'm sorry, I don't like that word either. I'm just saying a bunch of words I don't like. I'm sorry, but I have to be literal here. I have to be on. I'm not gonna keep it on the down low like I usually do. All right. Calling someone a cuck just because they are a cuck does not give someone power. Calling someone a beta just because they look like a beta doesn't mean they are given some sort of power to do so. And this is what really pisses me off about the left. They'll use those buzz buzzwords, but then when they use their buzzwords, they don't even acknowledge that they're being sexist or racist. And it's really irritating the hypocrisy that the left just chooses to go on because they're just that stupid. Either that stupid, or they're sucked up in their ideology so much that they'll believe any word some inspirational person says, like Jesse Williams or Jesse Jackson or freaking Mark Lamont Hill or something as truth, even when they're being ignorant jackasses. This is bad. Have to wield power over them. No, it doesn't. They're weak and cowardly, not strong and brave like the person slinging insults from their computer screen. Okay, if I'm gonna insult you, unless you're living like 10,000 miles away, I will do it to your face. Unless I don't want to get in trouble, like at school. But I will insult. If I'm going to insult you, I will do it to your face. Like I said, I try not to be brutally honest. But if you piss me off enough, like you're doing right now, Francesca, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna hold back. It's, I mean, it's too late. I honestly thought I wouldn't be able to get a chance to debunk you. And I did that, and I finally got a good chance over Cinco de Mayo. 
But I wanted to do this one over cut because you just, I just want to show you the absurdity of MTV News. And this entire segment is basically just a segment over the absurdity of MTV News. MTV in general, and why Francesca Ramsey sucks. So, yeah. That was also sarcasm. But Your mom was sarcasm last night. Oh. Maybe if upholding white supremacy and hyper-masculinity is important to you. Oh my god, stop with the bullshit. Otherwise... Cuck becomes a lot less powerful when you realize... Cuck is not powerful! Like most insults, Cuck says a lot more about the person using it than the person being called on. Okay, so what about the right people... Okay, wait a minute. What about the people calling people... Uh, what about the black guy calling uh, uh, white people cracker or stuff like that? Or they, or they, or they, call, actu or they call other black people or Uncle Tom's. What about that? What about the sexism in your own freaking community, for crying out loud? Where they're always saying nigger in every other fucking line in a freaking rap video. Are, are you really going to come at me and just start trying to claim the moral freaking high ground like that? Are you really going to do that? Is this really what you're trying, your leg to stand on? Just, come, just because someone says cuck, it excuses all the other racism coming from your own freaking community? Is that what you're trying to say, Francesca? Because guess what? It isn't It isn't coming well with me. It isn't coming well with the people who debunk your videos a lot, like Andy Worski. This, even black people can't stand you. Like, my, na my name is Josephine, which was also one of Andy Worski video, debunking the video over Cinco de Mayo. So, I mean, there's that. And then you have Anthony Brian Logan, really outspoken black conservative, he don't like you either. He, he, he has a pretty good video over debunking MTV News' uh, resolute MTV New, MTV's basically oh white uh, resolution for white guys thing. So, Francesca, you have no more leg to stand on, judging from just the way you react to everything as being racist or sexist. You even took. I'm not. I don't even remember the most race the thing she called racist. It's. Uh, I just can't stand the BS coming from these people. And it's gotten to the point where I literally just want to shoot myself in the head with the sh with the Combat Evolved Magnum. Actually, I just do it right now with the Halo 5 Magnum. Just look at me. Yeah, I'm just... Got it right here. No, no, I'm actually gonna kill myself. Oh yeah, I forgot. I won't shoot without the dark. Well, got it. Well, I'm not gonna shoot my head, so the ball's gotta go. Oh, oh, thank God my shirt deflected it. But yeah, that's basically what I feel like doing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Don't die, and hopefully nothing else happens to where everyone just dies.